can stand up. She is. Excuse me. Uh, she. Oh, I met this woman when she celebrated her birthday here at Valley Variety. She came up, she played the game, she brought some friends, and she came up to me after the show. She said, I want to do comedy with you in this show. So a couple months later, we made it happen. Maybe there's some people out there who want to do the same thing, right? Uh, she is a, uh, an artist and community instigator in downtown Mesa whose main philosophy is when all else fails, laugh. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together, take them apart, and put them back together again as I welcome to the Valley Variety stage, Jamie Galassa! He is a hard act to follow, I tell you, especially for a newbie like me. So I, there's two things you need to know about me. I am um, a late starter, and also I'm Jewish. I'm also ticklish, but I'm Jewish. So I've been looking in the last few years learning how to do stand-up and watching comedians perform and listening to advice from good people who know what they're doing. And basically a lot of one of the pieces of advice is to start with what you're comfortable with, what you know. Um, Sarah Silverman said when she doesn't know what to say, she like comes out and says, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be funny tonight. I don't think I can be funny. I don't know why is that funny, but she says it's always funny. So I'm starting with two of my favorite Jewish jokes. And it's, it's okay to tell like stereotype jokes as long as you make sure that like, people know like you identify with what that group is so it's politically correct, right? So I am ticklish, I mean Jewish, so let me just tell you my two favorite Jewish jokes. The first one is, why do Jews answer every question with a question? Do you know? Why do Jews answer every question with a question? Why not? Why not? Exactly! <laughs> That's true. And the second one is a really classic joke that was been told for years and years, and it was at um, some of the um, resorts in Upper State New York where people from Philadelphia, Jews, mostly go for the weekend. It was all inclusive. And the husband says to the wife, oh my God, we just, we saved up this money, we came for the weekend, and we were just so excited about it, and the food is terrible. That's a sin in Jewish family. Food is terrible. And the wife says, yeah, and the portions are so small. <laughs> okay, so I used to tell a lot of Jewish jokes um, in Mason when I first moved there. And I was telling jokes and nobody would laugh. And I'm like, okay, I know there are not many of us in downtown Mesa, but are they like just ignorant or people are, they seem so uncomfortable. Are they just, are they anti-Semitic? I don't think so, they seem pretty nice. So I didn't understand why nobody was laughing. And one day I'm looking in the mirror and I see that I'm wearing a cross. Now that's not so surprising. I did convert to Christianity and I wore a cross for a few years, but I didn't know when I was telling the Jewish jokes that I did not look Jewish. I was wearing a cross. So the people, they weren't anti-Semitic or ignorant. They thought I was anti-Semitic or ignorant. That was terrible. So, um, I'm a late starter, like I said. Recently, I decided I wanted to go back to graduate school. So I went to ASU, and I'm looking into a degree, and I'm waiting to talk to people. And I'm really scared to go to, the, to uh, campus because I feel really old. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to feel so uncomfortable. I'm going to walk around here, everyone's going to be so much younger, and I'm going to feel really uncomfortable, and they're all going to know I'm really old. So I get to campus on my way to talk to some people about a graduate degree, and I'm walking around, I'm like, hey, this isn't too bad. There's a lot of old people here. I feel right at home. I don't let's not, people are too young. There are not that many young people. I mean, there's a lot of them, but I don't feel out of place. So I'm getting my confidence up, and I'm walking to this meeting, and I'm waiting in this office, and a really friendly, nice, young student comes up to me, and she says, so, um, do you have a grandchild here? <laughs> this is a true story. And so it's like, uh, no, I am a late bloomer. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, my daughter is 21. She's in college, but she's not here, but she thinks I'm a grandmother. And I'm like, no, I don't have a grandchild here. And I'm like, there goes my confidence, right? I'm going to go meet someone. I'm like, oh, no. And then she's like, oh, so what do you teach? <laughs> so basically, I did feel really comfortable, but now I realize that all the people walking around that look like me and a little younger, they're professors. <laughs> so a lot. To, um, I've been watching about learning how to do comedy, and um, one thing is that I felt like um, 
you know, you, you just have to do the best you can and you tell good stories and just don't ever give up. Follow your dreams, do the best you can, no matter what age you are, how many times you change, because you might as well go for it, right? Why not? Yeah. Mm -hmm.